Okay. That was really impressive, Thomas. That will be very interested to follow the hardware that you're building. Mine is a software project. And as you should be able to see on screen, I hope you can, it's Commodore 64 roguelike dungeon, except it's actually multi-platform and that and life getting in the way is why it's not a completely finished project right now. Although it is playable and I can share the links to this presentation and also the links to where you can play it, download it. But it all started a couple of years ago when for a particular reason, none of us were really going outside very much and uh, my collection went from being an interesting little collection of computer hardware to every machine that I didn't have as a kid that I wanted and which obviously it's fun in, in itself collecting all these old machines and getting them working the problem is when you've got them what do you do with them so I thought wouldn't it be cool if I could write a game for every one of my machines, which is basically every one of the machines that I knew about growing up and some that I did. And I came across a project that would help do that. And so I got quite far into developing it. And the project that helped me was TRSE, which you may have heard of. TRSE is development environment and set of compilers that allows you to develop for lots and lots of retro computing platforms. But you'll notice that the date on the screen, if you can squint and see that, 2021. And that's where I got to. Because even though this development environment was very good and still super impressive, it's based on Pascal, which is a language that I don't know very well. But also, a lot of the computers that I had were not fully supported. So as well as writing the game, as well as trying to get the environment working, I was also contributing libraries to this project to enable these systems to run. And it was just getting too much. And add to that, once you get past one or two computer systems as a target, you quickly realize that even things like ASCII, which is supposed to be a standard, back in the 1980s, it wasn't a standard. A lot of these predate ASCII. So I got into a lot of trouble. So what I thought was going to be an easy thing, a text-based roguelike dungeon crawler, I had the silver bullet of TRSE. It didn't work out like that. But it stuck in my mind. It was still something I wanted to do. And especially every time I look at all these computers, I think, I, I could do this. Surely I can do this. So I had a project where I was getting back into programming in C, and I realized that might possibly be the answer. because. C, this is my naive mind, C works on everything, right? And it turns out that there's compilers for pretty much everything from calculators all the way through to mainframes. So surely now I can write this game for everything. That's foreshadowing. No, I can't, but I have got close. So what you can see on screen is the first thing. Creating a game is partly the game engine partly the game mechanics and the logic. And part of it is the levels. So how can I make it easier? I take the levels out of it and make them random. So I came up with this program which would generate a random random map. I hope that it's showing on screen. So every time you refresh. So this is C compiled to WASM. And essentially, it's a map generation algorithm. So I knew I could create the maps. Okay, so... That's part of the challenge out of the way. And so I started over. And so I've got a Commodore PET version. So we can we use my web-based emulator and we can not so much, it's not the full game, right, at this stage, but I managed to get a version of the game where you can move around and you can pick things up and there's racks, the letter R, you've got these power-ups and you've got health, you've got a sword. Cool. No graphics you notice this is Petsky, but that is the game able to be compiled. So let's go get, go the whole way. Let's get some graphics going on the scene. And so again, naively, I thought all I have to do is change the character set to user defined characters and it's a graphical game. And that's it. I can just focus on the gameplay. So I do have that running and 
again, you can play. And uh, it does look a little bit prettier. And again, we've got rats, we've got goblins, and you can fight and uh, got power ups and all that nice stuff. The only problem I have at this point is all of the differences between different computers have to be built into this one code base. So I essentially have to say, if it's a Commodore 64, do this. If it's Commodore Plus 4, do this. And I had to abandon all the machines with less than, I think, less than 48K. So I am supporting the Altair 8080 and the Imsi and all the CPM machines if they had 64K Plus, but I can't do the Commodore 16 and the VIC-20 because my code, it's not because of the machine, my code can't take advantage of RAM expansions and my code's so bloated because I'm having to take into account all these different machines. But if it's got 64K and above, it, it compiles. And so it will work on Linux, Mac, and Windows Terminal. I can compile it using Raylib. So I've got a nice, pretty online version with actual graphics. And as you can see, it's got a full fog of war thing going on. Yeah, it's close. It's getting there. But the reason why I'm now considering it a Commodore 64 game is because to get it to be an actual game rather than just a couple of enemies and some game logic and some randomization, I really should focus on one platform and then take that code base and then deploy it to another platform instead of trying to create one code base that works on absolutely everything. There's probably people out there that can do it and have done it. That's not me. So yeah, my attempt to try and make one game that works on everything, not a complete failure, but not success either. I'm now concentrating on Commodore 64. I'll try and get the Commodore 64 version as good as it can be. And then as much as possible, take that to other platforms. I am still considering making it work in Petski for the Commodore FET as the baseline. And then everything else can be better in theory. Because that also gets me off the hook for creating music and sprites and graphical intro screens and all those things. So that's where I'm at right now. I've got a game that you can play and we've got the Commodore Pet version, got the Commodore 64 version. And people tell me it's already almost fun if you know how to play because I've got no instructions either. But it does compile and it, it, you can play and uh, there's a little bit of variety of enemies. So that's where I'm at. And uh, as I said, I can share the links with Sebastian and then you can play with it and tell me what you don't like about it and then I can continue. So how do I stop sharing now? Oh, time for questions then? I'll okay. ask a question. Sorry. So you said that your program is bloated because it has to accommodate different uh, machines. Sorry, are you doing the code for every possible machine in it or you're doing some conditional compilation? Uh, I'm doing both. So I'm doing conditional comp compilation. The problem is because I'm using different compilers, even that breaks down because the, the syntax for the conditions is different between CC65 and Z88. That, so I try to be over ambitious with that as well. If you stick within CC65, that makes it easier. But also there's different versions of C. So like the C89 and different compiler releases amongst all of these multi-compilers. So again, if I stick to just Commodore 64, I don't have to have all that conditional stuff. But even between the Commodore PET and the C64, because I want to have a help screen and I'm doing user defined characters, even the C64 couldn't use the same characters as on the PET because like on the PET, I'm using the at sign as the player character. Whereas I might want to have the at sign to say, email me with feedback <laughs> at this email address on the Commodore 64. So it's things like that, which smarter people than me would be able to figure out, but it's already taken me a lot of brain bandwidth just to get to this point. So I'm trying to make it easier for myself. And so that's why I'm going to stick to one platform at a time now. The other thing with the multiple platforms as well is if I stick to the Commodore 64, and say that I'll release it as a disc game, then certain things can load from disc. Whereas before I was thinking, 
it all has to load at once because it might be loading off tape or off of a cartridge. And so I was just getting myself into a mess trying to overthink all of the potential scenarios. Whereas if I say it's a D64 for Commodore 64, then it can load some resources off disk, if that makes sense. Okay, thank you. I see a comment from Dave. Very interesting. Keep up the good work on your game. Focusing sounds like the right strategy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think I tend to overthink things that over engineer things. And the simplest option is just to pick one and run with it. Because if we fail at one, at least nobody in the Big 20 community knows about it. I think when we showed the step-by-step approach, I was thinking that maybe that could be an option for implementing it on a BBS. Yeah. If you could play if you kind of from like, I don't know, let's see, maybe that's something to think about for the Petsky version. Yeah, I think if I focus on the Petsky version, it removes a lot of things that... I know the Commodore Pet, actually, some of the games do have music, but... Uh, that's not something that I feel like I would have to implement for the Commodore Pet. And most Commodore Pets didn't have joysticks or controls, right? So it can be just keyboard control. So it does help a fair amount. And at the same time, there's still a variation. There's 40 column wide and 80 column wide. Do I deal with both or so? One challenge at a time. Yeah. It's already challenging enough, but that's why we do it, right? Yes. The comment is there really minds must be a nightmare to juggle all the differences. It's a nightmare, but also it's really cool researching these things. But that's another reason for procrastination because I can call it research and then really not get anywhere and say, Oh, I didn't realize that this computer could do this. And because I got it working on the Apple II, and it's like, Chris, that's just crazy because the Apple II, the way it displays characters on screen in a sort of alternating weird I just went down that rabbit hole and just it got really silly it just the Apple II is a wonderful machine but not for display on screen from memory okay I don't see any more questions I will stop the recording now many thanks again 